So today's YouTube comments, boxing gloves, are for the professional podcast editors who probably aren't going to approve of what I'm about to show you. Let's dive in. When I started my first podcast, I literally walked down to a local bookstore and I spent like $8 or something like that on a podcasting for dummies book to show me how to do podcast editing. It was super hard. It took me months and months. And if this is a football playing field, here's what podcast editing looked like for me back then. And sadly, this is what I feel most podcast editing videos here on YouTube look like. And this is too much for 90% of podcasters out there. And it's not necessary. So many people get hung up on all the nitty gritty things they could do in the editing process. It gets overwhelming. They never start or they start and they get so bogged down by how long it takes. That's not what I'm here to do today. I am going to show you the, what the hints, the hacks, the tactics or whatever that I do for all my podcasts that I teach my students. It's the easy way. So to spoil it for you right off the bat, uh, mine is actually called the MVP, the Minimum Viable Podcast. And what this means is the fewest amount of hours and minutes and tools and softwares and editing stuff, whatever you do to a podcast to make it shippable, ready to hit publish and so that your audience won't be able to tell the difference. That if you spend an extra three hours polishing it even further, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't know the difference. The minimum viable podcast that still sounds great. And luckily, it's only three pretty simple and straightforward steps. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you today. These three steps. Okay. Simple step number one. All right. So after you have recorded, whether or not you're recording with a guest, it's a solo show, you've gone some, you've gone to found some free music or whatnot. This is you talking in here. This is also you talking up in here. This is some sound effects, this is some music, whatever. The most time consuming part of the editing process, really, once you learn what you're doing is this step right here moving things in order in what I like to call the assemble phase. This is taking your track and removing the ums. That's an um right there. And removing lots of dead space. This is dead space. It didn't need to be in here or whatever. This is your intro music. Okay, well, I'm gonna put this over here and then this is your outro music over here. And then I'm going to, oh, this needs to be like a little bit softer right here as I'm talking. I'll bring the audio down on this one clip I'll bring the audio down on this one clip. I'll bring this audio clip up just a little bit, yada, yada. This is the assemble phase. You take all the clips, sound effects, music, intros, outros, voiceovers, whatever, and then you assemble them where they need to be on the timeline. Real world example with Logic Pro, this is how I edit my podcast generally. Step number one, bring in the different tracks. This is an interview. So I had my guest talking, me talking on two audio files. I drag and dropped those files in here. I plugged in a microphone to my computer. I hit record here in Logic Pro and did an intro over here and then an outro obviously at the very end. And then I had some sound effects and my music and stuff like that. I found those files on my computer, drag and drop them in here and roughly put them where they go. A few things you'll need to learn how to zoom in, how to zoom out, how to remove a piece of content. This is a little bit different in Audacity versus Logic Pro versus Premiere or anything like that. How to select a part and remove it. I just hit delete. I'm holding down the command key, control key. It's different for every DAW. You're going to know you need to go look up the instructions in the documentation on YouTube, else it could be very hard. And then you're just going to have to learn how to actually move your pieces. This is actually a little bit different for your DAW as well. Learn how to move the segments of audio around like this. Zoom in, zoom out, how to cut. One other thing I'll recommend is messing with the audio on a per track basis. You see here in Logic Pro, I could just drop my music down like this, but that does it for the entire track. One helpful thing to learn is how to do it like this. I'm clicking in here. You can see my audio line. This is different for each digital audio workstation. I recommend going and learning it for yours. This will allow you to fade in, fade out music, sound effects, different vocals, different on a clip by clip basis, on a track by track basis. Learn how to adjust the volume, learn how to remove content like us and ums. It's also useful to learn how to ripple delete, 
You can go Google what that is. I'm not going to show you how to do it right here because it depends on your DAW and uh, how to assemble your clip. After you have gotten all of your clips and sound effects and vocals or whatever all assembled on a timeline, simple step number two is all about timing. You see this thing over there? You see this thing over here, these big mats I have? Well, the point they serve is to reduce sound from that. That is my furnace that's four and a half feet away from my podcasting microphone. So the furnace is not on right now, but it sounds a little something like this. And let's see what this looks like in a podcast recording. Check one, two. This is Pete recording my fake podcast here. This could be a furnace or a fan or a breeze or room noise, room echo, or literally any other background noise here. Oof. So you can see my vocal wavelengths, waveforms, whatever you want to call it. But you also see like this right here where I'm not talking, but it is picking up that background noise. That background noise is actually underneath everything that I just recorded. Now, here's the important part. Here's what I just recorded. If I skip step number two in the podcast editing process and I add some effects, I level my audio, I'm doing some compression or any other fancy effects that we're going to do in step number three, here's what that would look like right now. I'm going to be boosting my vocals. I'm going to be adding, adding volume, gain, leveling, all that stuff, but I'm also going to be doing it to the background noise. If you skip step number two, all of that background noise is going to be amplified in the rest of your podcast editing, and it's going to be even more loud and obnoxious on the final podcast. So what is step number two? You probably guessed that already. It is to actually remove the background noise. This is insanely important before you do anything else to your audio. So I'm in Audacity, but of course you're going to want to go check with whatever digital audio workstation you are using, I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to noise reduction and get that noise profile. It's going to listen to that background noise and try and, uh, you know, identify it, separate it. And then I'm going to select all my track, or I could just select what I want to reduce. And then I'm going to do repeat noise reduction. And then boom, you can see that actually decreased right there. Let's see it again. And boom, and boom, and boom. You can see that actually decreased right there. Step number one. Take all of your audio clips, music, sound effects, whatever it is, assemble it in whatever order you want to on your timeline. Step number two, you have to reduce background noise if there's any there at all. By the way, just a little heads up really quick. You're going to see a lot of things called an envelope or noise floor or noise reduction plugins or effects, or you're going to see a bunch of lingo and language. The important thing to do is spend 30 minutes on YouTube or in Google looking for your digital audio workstation plus reduce background noise. Just search for that. You can use any number of tools to make this happen. I usually use a plugin from Isotope that I paid for three or four years ago. It's one click and it analyzes the background noise and it removes it automatically and I never think about it again. Again, super professional podcast editors are going to be like, no, you need to run it through Isotopes, RX-7, and fancy pants softwares. No, I have over a million downloads on my podcast, and I just use a one-click plugin that looks for background noise and takes it out and makes it softer so I don't amplify it in step number three. And then step number three is this, right? Step number three is to run your audio through a magic tool and then hit publish. Wait, what, Pete, don't I need to learn about uh, using compression and compressors and EQs and limiters and leveling and normalizations and minus 16 luffs and loudness standards and all of that jazz? Yeah, you could worry about all that stuff. And over time, you probably will how to use one or two of those effects, but you don't really need to. And in fact, again, I have over a million downloads for my current podcast, and I generally don't use any of those things. I generally use Auphonic or fix my levels, or if you're a Buzzsprout user like I am, you can use Magic Mastering. These are kind of magic wizardry tools. Here's that audio. Again, remember I had that background noise in there. What I'm gonna do is export this as a wave. That is the highest quality audio file, much more higher quality than an MP3. I'm gonna save this to my downloads folder, and then I'm gonna come to my magic 
tool of choice, which is Auphonic.com. I actually have a whole separate video on Auphonic on the YouTube channel here. You can go look at that. I'll walk you through this entire thing step-by-step, step. but you can start absolutely free. Uh, you get a few hours a month of post-processing for free. It's absolutely incredible. I'm gonna take this audio I just did. I'm going to upload it in there. I'm gonna choose 96 bit rates. I don't even know why I do that. You probably don't even have to. I'm gonna export mono minus 16 LUFs for podcast. I am going to do even more noise and hum reduction, although I kind of already did that really. I'm gonna hit start production. I'm gonna hit start production again to actually do it. It's going to upload. And while that's uploading, processing, I can even close this browser now. What this tool is going to do is compression and EQ and again, more background noise, leveling to get it up at right volume, a loudness standard. You don't even really know what that stuff means. You can use one of these magic tools. Fixmylevels.com is another one. This one actually just finished. So let's uh, take a look and see what it sounds like. Here is the finished version. Check one, two. This is Pete recording my fake podcast here. This could be a furnace or a fan or a breeze or room noise. Room All right, is it absolutely perfect? No, of course not. And you can actually see the old version, by the way, in Alphonic, you can actually click down here and listen to the old version if you want to quickly compare like this. You can see it brought up the waveforms. It made it a little bit more leveled. It kind of raised this to be louder, to hit loudness standards. I can literally just click download. And this is generally what I end up publishing. Don't hate me, professional podcast editors. <laughs> I suggest assembling your clips of audio and sound effects and any other voiceovers you might have. Remove silences, ums, and uhs if you want to take those out. Remove some background noise, go to YouTube or Google and figure out how to do that. Now, then I recommend just exporting your file, your whole thing, all the tracks mixed down together as a WAV format or an MP3 really, and using a tool like Auphonic to quickly make it sound better. It's a magic tool, baby. Now. That said, if you do want to see more about these things, I do use these on occasion. I want you to click this video right here. I actually have a full walkthrough of how I podcast. My entire workflow, because sometimes I use Descript, Logic Pro, sometimes I do more of these fancy things in addition to Alphonic, and I walk through that whole thing. I know you're gonna learn a thing or two there, so go check out that video. I love you guys here on YouTube. Thank you, Blog Tribe. Adios.